Hey everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about telemetry in games. Real Keithernet asks, Hi Tim, I'm interested in learning about how you handle telemetry in games. How do you learn how people are playing your game so you can balance it or make other fixes? That's a good question. By the way, if you're wondering, it is very cold here. <laughs> I'm freezing. Um, let me answer that. The TLDW is telemetry works by sending packets to a telemetry server from the game for storage and analysis. So let me break that down into, I want to talk about the server. I want to talk about the packets. And then I want to talk about the analysis. So I haven't done this in all my games, but it's something I started doing at Carbine on Wildstar and did it in a few other games to a limited extent, um, mostly because it's hard to get a telemetry team. You really do need a, a group that does this. So let me talk about uh, the telemetry server. So the telemetry server is a computer at the office or whatever data center you want to put it at. Whenever the game starts up, it will connect to that server, which verifies it. Now, if it's a client game, this can happen after the client's already connected um, to, you know, and the player's logged in and it's verified all that and it's been passed on to a game server. So the verification's already been done that this is a valid client. At that point, the server could just go, hey, telemetry server, expect packets from this guy. Um, this is just to prevent, you know, packets coming in and spamming the telemetry server. So once the telemetry server understands, hey, this game is being played at this internet URL, this internet address, sorry, um, it will prepare to receive packets from it. Now, ours used a database called MySQL to store the events. We had somebody on staff at Carbine and at Obsidian, a guy named Twain Martin. He was a database master he could basically make SQL do anything you wanted. <laughs> and in this case, the game would send its packets whenever an event happened and SQL would take that in and store it based on knowing who the client was and what character they were playing and what save game they were using. It would store it off so that then we could gather all that data together. But I will get to that because now let's talk about what those packets are. So, in general, the packet is a time-stamped, location-marked chunk of data. The game will send these mostly, and I'll explain the two exceptions in a minute, mostly these are discrete in-game events. So, whenever the player takes damage, or uses an ability, or dies or transfers from one map to another like they go into a dungeon instance the game will send a packet off to the telemetry server and what's great about these is these are distinct events they they have a they're they're happening one time they have the location they're happening in they have the timestamp. so if you take damage let's say the player steps in a trap an event would go in, hey, the player took damage from this trap at this location for this much damage and this damage type at this time on this map. If the player decides to use an ability, let's say they heal themselves, it would be the player used this ability targeting themselves, it was this ability and it healed this much damage. Let's say they threw a fireball at someone, then it would be the player used the fireball ability, cast it at this target, whether it's a target location or a target creature at this time on this map it exploded and this did this damage to these targets so these are all things that just get stored away as just raw data now there's two exceptions to these packets some packets are non-discrete those are things like when the player moves the player is always moving and what you don't want to do is just do a packet when they start moving or when they stop moving because you want to know where they went in between those events so what tends to happen is whenever the player is moving, a packet is sent to the telemetry server, a very small packet because you're going to get a lot of these, of just 
the player is moving. He He's at this location. He's pointing in this direction. He's moving at this speed. Boom. And then this is done every, you can do this every tenth of a second, every quarter second, every second. It depends on what um, density you want on a heat map. And I'll explain that in a minute. But keep in mind, if you want more density, if you want a higher density, you're going to get be making a lot more of these packets, which are not only being sent, but are being stored. So you have to keep that in mind. You may have to you may have to get your movement packets. You may have to find a happy medium between a density you like and amount of data you want stored. And then finally, some game events are discrete, but they're not technically considered a game event. They're a non-game event. For example, something meta, like the player saves a game or loads a game or adjusts an option or quits. You want to store these for a lot of reasons, and I'll talk about that, but just think about it this way. You may want to know when do players decide to save the game? When when do players reload? Um, when do players go in and adjust combat difficulty? When do they go in and adjust cinematic options? When do players tend to quit? And that's, that's a really important one. Um, so those are the packets that get sent to the telemetry server. So now let's talk about analysis. In general, you are creating a huge amount of data, and that data can be analyzed in lots of different ways. You can do it for individual players. So you can say, hey, show me where this player went, um, what they did, but in general, they tend to be uh, uh, conglomerated. So, and you make things that, that we always called heat maps, and heat maps were Unfortunately, color coded, but I since I was involved, I usually picked color coding codings that involved brightness. So imagine if you grayscale the heat map, you could still tell what everything was. So I used kind of the brightness of it, the in HSV space, the V, to determine what the values were. And those heat maps could do things like heat map for motion would just show where all the players went in a particular map. So you could say, hey, I want to look at this map and I want to look at this area on the map. And it, would, it could gather together all the motion data from all the different players who played on that map. And you could see two things that are probably the most important. Where do they spend the most time? And do they get anywhere you weren't expecting people to get to? For example, if you had a mountain range that you thought was impassable and you see a place where players are going over it, if you really do want it to be impassable, you may want to go back there and adjust the angles on some of the, the hillsides of that mountain so, that, so it becomes impass impassable. I mentioned in another video that we had a instance, like a cave entrance at the top of a mountainside, and we expected nobody to be able to get there until they could fly. But our heat maps showed people walking up there. They found a path and they could jump and get up there. And that was something we wanted to fix because we didn't want that to happen. You can also do heat maps for things like damage. You can show, you can add together all the damage that players get at particular locations and make a heat map for that. And then you can see where in the map is it the most dangerous. And there are all kinds of things you can do with that kind of data. You also, I'll get to, I'll get to that uh, response to the analysis in a second. I'm kind of showing how you can gather the data together and lots of things. You can also gather, instead of heat maps, you can look for reports, what you call moments of interest. Like, where is a place where players die more fre most frequently? And you could do that as a heat map, or you could actually say, show me like this location with this radius is has over 50 deaths per hour or 100 deaths or 1,000 deaths because that's going to be very interesting to you. You can also look for places where players save frequently, where they might reduce or increase the game's difficulty, especially the combat difficulty. You can also look for places where people quit. A heat map that shows where people quit frequently might be showing you places people rage quit. And that gets me into like responses. What can you do with all this data? You're likely to be getting lots of lots of data. And that's why you want to be careful how you analyze it because you don't want to get overwhelmed. But you probably want to think about what your, what responses you can make. And that will tell you what kind of analysis you want to make on the data. For example, um, you might have an expectation that people will quit in safe places. People will go back to town and quit. Or... Uh, people will quit when they're at a stopping point in the story. 
So you might look for places that aren't expected, like here's the middle of a dungeon and people tend to quit there a lot. Ooh, if you look at the heat map for damage taken or deaths and it's really high at that location, you may just have identified a place where people are rage quitting. Um, I heard a um, story, it's completely anecdotal, I don't know if it's true, that there was a game, and I think it was one of the um, Lorecroft games, one of the Tomb Raider games, where they had found a jump there was supposed to be a, a place where somebody, could, the player was just supposed to jump, but there were a lot of deaths there and a lot of player quitting there. And it turned out that the jump, which should have been really easy, it was because the places curved like this and they expected the player to go to the places where they were closer and jump over. But because they curved, you know, they curved in like this, players would be running and they could see the spot and they'd try to jump earlier. So putting a little raise a little railing on that made people go to the end and go oh i have to jump here so it could be fixed um high death rates are expected in areas where you have bosses and other powerful creatures you still want to check them uh, make sure they're not abnormally high you also may want to check them to make sure that there aren't things like hey players of certain classes die a lot to this boss and other uh, classes don't what is it about this class's attacks that that tend to wipe parties of this class, but not other classes. Those are things you want to look at. Or you may want to look at the whole game. You like One of the things you might want to do is, after you've processed the whole game, every map, every outdoor area, you may want to process it all and say, are the death rates among all the different classes in your game about the same? If you have skill-based games, you could look, analyze the skills of the players and break them down into roughly combat-oriented, stealth-oriented, and dialogue-oriented and go, are those three characters dying roughly the same? Are they getting to the end of the game at roughly the same level? Like whenever anyone gets experience points, you could record it. And then you could see, wow, stealth players get experience and points in a lot of different places than combat players. Which you would expect because combat players are killing things and XP players are sneaking around. But if your game is only giving XP from quests, you would expect both of them to get the same amount of XP. So if by the end of the game, you're seeing, say, say, stealth players are finishing the game three levels lower on average than dialogue players or combat players, that may be something you want to fix. Basically, you want to say, are players playing the game like you expected? So your expectations feed into this entire system. You have to decide what your expectations are, which then tell you what kind of response you'd have to things coming out of the data and having knowing that you may want to make those responses tell you what kind of data you even want to analyze and get a report for which then feeds back into what kind of data you want to collect in the first place so it's frequently with the case where we would go back and add something like "Ooh, we never um we want an event that happens whenever a player accepts a quest and we expect most of those to be in cities. But then you may find that way out, there's a dot way out from the city that is frequently a place where players are accepting quests. And you find out one of the level designers put a little shack out there with a really popular quest and people are taking it. Maybe that's good. Um, maybe you'd want your narrative designers to be aware of it so they can direct people out there. So those are the kind of things that would just interact. This is the kind of system that lets you get information back from the game being made that you may not know. And let me tell you, the bigger the game, the more these, this kind of information is important because I mentioned this before, even as a game director, I did not know every piece of content that was going in the game. I didn't talk to every NPC. And if I did, I didn't touch every branch of dialogue that could possibly be touched. And maybe it wasn't even possible for the character I was playing. So I know one thing that we did that was really useful on Pillars was we recorded how many times the player used one of his... Um, skills that wasn't like a combat skill or a dialogue skill or stealth skill, things like athleticism. We recorded when those got used. So we wanted to know a few things. Are all those skills being used roughly equally? And are they also being used frequently throughout the game? We discovered a few that were used more often than others. And we discovered a few that were front loaded and then hardly used at the end of the game. I wish I had had something like this on Fallout because we had, had, we had that... Um, 
energy weapon skill, but we didn't. We literally did not drop an energy weapon for the first third of the game, so that skill could not have been used. If we had had data like this, we would have seen that skill not being used for the first third of the game, and we would have known what the problem was. So this is the kind of stuff I think people use telemetry for, and I think it's really useful if you can get a really good telemetry team involved to make that server and make those reports for you so you can take a look at them. Anyway, I hope this answers your question. Real Keithernet.